Hi guys! Today I'm going to give you a demonstration on how I'm mixing this red, Yentico red, the latest pigment. Uh, only Schminke has it at the moment. Um, I'm still waiting for my pigment to arrive. It might take a couple of weeks since it's still uh, in the process of being made for me at the moment. But as a friend of mine said, you can mix Potter's Pink and Cronacodo Magenta to create a hue of this single pigment. So let's try that. So here I have Potter's Pink and Cronacodo Magenta. Um, I'm going to be making a little bit more Potter's Pink and just a tiny bit. of Cronacodon Magenta. This is PR122 and this is PR233. So what I'll be doing is I'm going to make two small batches, tiny micro batches of paint first before I'm going to slowly mix them together. Since Cronacoro Magenta is a very tinting pigment, as you can see, it gives us it gives off a very strong magenta pinkish color. As soon as I start mixing it with the binder, whereas this pigment, and I'm going to go a little bit towards the right here, is a very dull toned down, less chromatic pink. It's a beautiful pigment. It used to be a rather old fashioned pigment, but it's kind of making a comeback. All major brands carry this pigment as a single pigment color, as do loads of handmade watercolor paint uh, makers so do I. I really love this color, the granulation, the mixes you can make with it. Uh, as you might know, I'm not selling loads of mixes myself. I'm actually focusing a lot of on single pigments so people can mix themselves. Uh, convenient, convenient mixes are very nice to have. But I really like the kind of personalities of each individual pigment. And... Um, I like people to discover what they can do with it themselves. As you might have noticed in my videos. So, I'm modeling this first at the moment because this is a very easy thing to mold. Potter's Pink is a lovely creamy pigment. That just takes a few minutes for a teaspoon like that. So now I have a little bit more room for my magenta here. As you can see, I'm using the same technique as my Indian yellow. I'm spreading out the binder for my pigment to mix in uh, with my mother instead of my palette knife. It is quite a thirsty pigment. Um, what does that mean? It might need a little bit more binder than the Potter's Pink. I'm just adding a few drops. Since this is a mix and a uh, demonstration and an experiment for me, I can just add a few drops at a time to get the right consistency. Uh, because it's about the hue that I'm creating. Um, it's not, you know, paint that I'm selling. I have my recipes for my paint. This looks more like it. So, okay. Um, I have my...
Quinacridone uh, magenta right here. And my photos pink is over here. Uh, let's mix these two. So I probably, I probably no, I'm, I'm, I'm sure I need the entire amount of photos pink. I'm just using the entire amount of photos pink. And I'm first mixing it with the magenta that's already on my palette knife. And <laughs> it might be even enough. Let's have a look if it really is. Um, so I'm taking the tube of Yintico Red to see what I'm after. So this is almost violet like. So I'm after that. Let's add a tiny amount. You can see how tinting that pigment is. It's really overpowering. It pops pink. like this. So let's look at what we have on paper. Taking a piece of paper and this lovely paint over here. I think this is already too much Quinacridone magenta. So the only way to fix this is make more Potos Pink. I really didn't expect this to be this staining. So let's take the Intico and the one I'm mixing. So let's clean up, make some more Potter's pink and mix it with the paint I have over here. So I've cleaned up some uh, some of my plate. I'm just going to make Potter's pink on that spot. And we're going to have a look. how we can get as close as possible to Yintico Red. So let's see, I'm just using my palette, palette knife of the previous color here. Like I said before, this is a very easy thing to make some more. So this isn't hydrophobic, it's a really lovely pigment to get in to your binder. It's more expensive than the uh, than other pigments. Um, so I wouldn't start with this if you want to start making paint. Um, technique wise, you really could. Uh, price wise, um, if you want to experiment first, I'd start with ultramarine blue like I think most of us do actually. It's a very accessible pigment. You can get it anywhere you want. Any art shop. Uh, I think will sell an ultramarine blue pigment and it's quite cheap so you can experiment whatever you want for just a few dollars or euros or pounds or wherever you, wherever you live. So there is a big difference between uh, these two. Let's just take some of the paint and mix it into my tortoise pink here. still way more violet so it might be interesting to see if I can maybe mix it with a manganese violet uh, instead of uh, quinacridone violet. Uh, manganese violet also is a granulating pigment so in combination with potos pink that would be an interesting granulating mix but as a paint, this does look promising. Let's have a look. So, let's see.
what's what this will give us that small market I do have to say that it still isn't the same, it's still too much Potter's Pink, so um, I think, let's try that. Taking a new paper first. If you mix in a bit of the first mix a little bit of the second mix. Uh, you do need to keep in mind that there is a drying shift going on with uh, Crinacridone mag uh, magenta. A drying shift is what happens while the paint is drying. Um, it actually loses chroma. Brush is getting a little bit dry. Let's see if we can get this a little more flowing. Starting to look more like it, but still a little bit on the duller side. So I'm going to add even more of the first mix here. see where we are right now okay let's uh, let this dry and let's compare it to the Yintico swatch so I cleaned everything up um, this is the Yintico swatch and this is what we ended up with um, on camera I think now you can see the difference. This is uh, a cooler blue. This is warmer. Uh, you can see the staining of the chronacridone magenta. So you, you, you don't see the white of the paper coming through the granulation. You do see the granulation of the potter's pink, but the uh, chronacridone magenta makes everything pink, whereas this uh, makes the paper shine through more. So we need something else for that. And I think in my previous video, I had the answer for it right there. This is the cobalt blue, uh, or at least cobalt uh, pigment, the PB73. Um, violet version. I think we can recreate this if we can combine this with Potter's Pink. Let's try that in the next video. Hope you like this. Um, in the meantime, I've um, added all the paint I had on my plate, put it together. I ended up with a lovely granulating chronacridone magenta. And if you're interested, I uh, put everything in dot pens. So uh, send me a message if you're interested. Um, I might be able to send one to you. Uh, so let's see what we can do with that. Hope you like it. Uh, if you don't already, please guys give me a follow, like this video and see you next time. Oh, wait, but there's more. So I gave it some time to dry. Uh, this is the Intico and this is uh, the swatch of the mix I made. Um, let's put it to the test. With the spectrometer, uh, you can see the reflectance here with the blue wavelengths, the green wavelengths and a lot of red and near infrared wavelengths uh, reflected by the Yintico. Here, this is a green line. The red line will be the mix I made with Potter's Pink and Cronacridone Magenta. And as you can see, it has uh, a little less blue, uh, quite a lot of less green, some more yellow green wavelengths reflected here and less red uh, near infrared wavelengths, but it is quite close. Well, looking at this and the camera, it looks a bit different, but in real life, uh, color-wise, it looks quite close. But the main difference is still here. Uh, the paper shines through with the granulation, whereas here it's more separation than granulation, meaning the two paints spread out of each other instead of the paper shining through and heavy particles um, that make granulation possible 
just don't sink in as much. You can see the uh, Cronacrylon magenta just shining through instead of the paper, uh, since it is a staining pigment. Um, this is my test. This needs some tweaking because I've seen uh, one of my friends and followers uh, do this a lot better <laughs> than I did with just uh, a paint mixing right straight out of the tube. Um, but if you like this video, please give me a follow, like this video and comment what you uh, like to see next.